You've been an athlete for a long time, huh? <laughs> yes, I've been an athlete for all my, li all my life. I'm 39 years old now, and my first Summer Paralympics, uh, I was uh, 17 years old in, um, in Seoul, Korea. Um, and it's kind of a big difference between the Summer Games and the Winter Games. Uh, summer Games, most all the nations live in the same um, Olympic village. Um, Uh, and it's crowded there uh, during winter sport. It's um, it's a little bit different. Like uh, here in uh, Vancouver, uh, it's only sledge hockey and curling that's living in the same um, area. Uh, so it's a little bit smaller. And how do you like your experience so far in Vancouver? Uh, so far, it's uh, it has been great. Um, the facility is perfect. Uh, nice uh, apartments for staying and relaxing. And we have the. Uh, game center with its uh, pool and uh, other uh, electronic games and um, the food has been excellent we can it's a wide range of uh, food to choose from uh, everything from uh, le let's say from sushi to mcdonald's always important yeah it's always important we were talking about your experience it's your eight number eight experience in paralympic games or summer and winter together. Uh, if you would tell me about maybe your best moment into those experience, what could you tell me? Uh, it's, it's so hard to pick out one moment from uh, all, these, um, all these games, from all these years. Uh, but of course, uh, well, it's, uh, it's hard for me to say anything because everything has a special moment, like uh, uh, 88 was my first Olympic, uh, 92 was my Uh, second Olympic Games and uh, I got a gold medal there in swimming and 96 uh, my mother was home uh, with cancer and she died uh, shortly after I arrived home but I got a gold for her there and then um, 98 we was uh, winning uh, gold medal in sledge hockey um, and 2006 I, uh, um, I asked my um, no wife to ask uh, to marry me on the ice in Torino after the Italian game so it's all of this it's uh, it has just been a um, very nice experience uh, for me uh, to compete in um, in different kind of sports we realize that sport has been a big part of your life for a long time yeah i, I started swimming when i was uh, maybe like six, seven years old And uh, I swam until uh, 96 after Atlanta Olympic Games, and then I stopped. But I did a mix of swimming and sledge hockey since uh, 91. And um, I think uh, I got a little bit free from doing swimming because it was a sport you had to train extremely hard to get on the top. So um, it's, it's nice. I, get, uh, I have a lot of uh, benefits of doing swimming before. Do you wish to be an athlete for a long time again? <laughs> What do you think about the future for you? Uh, it's a, uh, I don't know. Um, right now, it's working out great for the team. Um, we are doing great games. We are improving, uh, and it's fun doing the game, doing the sport. So, as long as those conditions are are there, uh, I think I will compete uh, for more years. I said uh, many years ago that I would compete until I have 10 Paralympic games. So that's eight more years. Um, maybe that will happen. I am, I'm play, playing number 11 as well, so maybe I will finish with 11 Olympics. So uh, I just have to wait and see. As long as I'm, as long as I'm, um, uh, get good result in my personal playing on the ice, and uh, the team is doing great, that will uh, inspire me to keep on doing sledge hockey. And for sure, we will wish you all the best. Helge Bjornstad, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Here it was this interview with Mr. Helge Bjornstad, one of the key players on the Norwegian side. C'était l'entrevue avec Monsieur Helge Bjornstad, l'un des joueurs clés, l'un des joueurs importants pour l'équipe de la Norvège, qui, je vous le rappelle, est classé au deuxième rang. Avant de retourner à Rob et Rick, je vous invite à s'intoniser également à Radio. 
au Centre paralympique de Vancouver à porter votre radio également aux épreuves de curling en fauteuil roulant et écouter nos experts commenter toutes les séances de cette discipline. You know, there's also more with your little radio. Tune on Hack, uh, tune into Hack Radio at the Vancouver Paralympic Center. Take your radio to watch wheelchair curling and listen to our expert commentary for all the wheelchair curling sessions. Here at UBC Thunderbird Arena, both teams are back on the ice and we're back with Rob Henrik. We are underway, third period action with Sweden leading 1-0 and the long shot from the blue line was stopped by Nielsen. Ingvarsson trying to get it out. It's tied up in behind the Swedish net. Nicholas Ingvarsson is able to get it around the boards where Aaron Andersson will try to battle it out. Kept alive and in the zone by Norway. Marcus Holm, the only goal scorer in this game, shoots the puck high, hits the glass, and deflects out of play. Holm is having a lot of trouble back there. He's got, he gets the puck in the corner and he's not really sure what to do with it. That one he shot up over the glass out of play, but you notice that, that Norway, right off the drop of the puck, has been more aggressive, right into the zone. They know they only have 15 minutes to tie this game up, and they could run out of time. Jans Kask will take the face off for Sweden. We'll keep an eye on him in this third period. He may only be on the bench once. Rovostad, and if his team doesn't tie this one up, Rovostad could see uh, more of the 15 minutes than you might expect. Sweden trying to get it out. And in fact, it does slide out to center ice where Rovelstad will go back for it. His pass finds Pedersen, who returns for Varens, but that's right on the stick of Kask, who calmly shoots it in. Sweden's just going to be happy here to get the puck deep, send one four checker in, make sure they don't get three guys caught. Try to four check, get the puck as Kask did right there, and just get a shot on net, because you never know. Sweden managed only one shot on the Norwegian goal in the second period. They've already got one here, just over a minute into the third period. Holm. And now Pedersen for Norway for Rovolstad. And he'll slide it down the ice. It might be an icing call, and it is against Norway with a minute 37 gone by in the third period. And right now it is Sweden in a huge upset leading one nothing over Norway. I would think that eventually they're gonna get Peterson and Bjornstad out there together. They have them on two different lines right now. But they'll, go, they'll cut their bench down. They're not afraid to play six, seven guys. Both of these teams will play right away again tomorrow. Norway faces Italy and Sweden gets Canada at the 1.30 game tomorrow afternoon. But right now, Sweden's eyes and focus on this game against Norway. Jans Kask against Eskil Hagen. Kask wins the faceoff. Ingvarsson now for Sweden. Jan Edbom is the head coach of Sweden. There's a chance at a shot. And then a rebound. Andersson with the left hand. And that was blocked. Here comes Norway to center, but it is smartly broken up by Holm. That was a good play in the neutral zone. Maybe he's fine as long as he's not in his own end. <laughs> yeah, he only has trouble deep in his own corner. That was a good play, though, by Holm. Ingvarsson back to get it, and he'll shoot it hard off the boards, but not hard enough to get it out. Norstoga could not make a good offensive play for Norway. It's still in the Swedish zone. Koss gets it to the line and to center. That's one thing that always got me irate is when the players put it back into the flow of the play. They got three guys along the boards and they shoot it right back into the pile instead of reversing the play the other way. Sweden regroups and here they come to center. Holm trying to get on the end of the pass from Ingvarsson, it was too far. Hagen back for it, he's taken against the boards. Ingvarsson follows up to the blue line for Kask. Left-handed shot, couldn't get anything on it. Ingvarsson tries to follow up for Sweden. Now Andersson, he can't get a shot away and Norway will get it to center. Bjornstad is in the open, but the pass does not reach him. He'll have to chase after it. Helga Bjornstad. 
And it's taken away by Kask. Maybe an opportunity for Sweden. He sends it across the ice. It's just out of the reach, though, of Lundgren. Yeah, Ramos Lundgren, the 18-year-old from Tomalila. In Sweden, another of their youngsters who's making an impact. Ingversen. And this is sent down the ice by Norway. They ice the puck, Rick, with 11.13 to go in the third and still trailing 1-0. Very uncharacteristic of Norway. Their, their passing is usually a lot crisper than this. And I'm very surprised they haven't cut their bench down. I mean, this, this is a huge game for Norway. If they should lose this one, it's, it's three points that's going to cost them. They still have to play Canada. Well, maybe we should remind people the point system. If you win in regulation, you earn three points. If you win in overtime or the shootout, you only get two points. Sweden wins the faceoff, but it comes all the way back into the Swedish zone where Marcus Holm will go back for it. And he'll get it out to center. The pass doesn't reach Andersen. Kasperi trying to get to it, but it's Peterson instead for Norway. As they begin to get desperate, Andersen steals it. Kasperi taken away, and Roin will shoot it in on net, and that looked like it was dangerous. <laughs> Nielsen makes the save. Nielsen is just so relaxed back there. He looks like he doesn't see it. Peterson with a chance. A oh. great save by Nielsen. He what robs. What a fantastic save by Nielsen. Best save of the, the Paralympics so far. Maybe the best scorer in sledge hockey. Rolf Einer Pedersen is robbed by Ulf Nielsen, and it is still a 1 0 Swedish oh, lead. Man. He just didn't go far enough across. We'll see it on the, on the replay soon, but Nielsen played a perfect. He waited for him. He probably knew by which way he was shooting that he wasn't going to be able to get up, get the puck up, and he just sprawled with his left arm. You see him here. He waited, and then he just sprawled. He goes another foot, he's got it. What a tremendous save. Pedersen, just, just not far enough. Wow. And a spectacular save no. by Nielsen. That's a game winning save. That's a, that's a save that makes a team go, what do we have to do? Our best player in alone on their no. goaltender and he can't score. I know Norway to be a very patient team, but their time's running out. Guys, a little updates, little updates from what's happening in Whistler. Some uh, medal events there in biathlon. And let me tell you one thing. The Russian Federation is on fire. Three gold medals today for the Russian Federation in biathlon. And they also have one silver medal. So already four medals for the, the Russians today. Right off the face-off, Rovolstad's shot was stopped by Nielsen. More pressure by Sweden. Bjornstad. Pedersen. But Kask for Sweden, who has stymied his opponents at every opportunity, gets it ahead for Kaspare. And the 16-year-old for Sweden makes a nice play for Andersen, who will get it into the Norwegian zone. And we watch the clock tick. Nine minutes and less than 50 seconds, 9.45. Kask, who seems to use one of the longest sticks, or is it me, Rick, but it seems no, longer. It does, it looks a lot longer, but he controls the puck very well. And what he's, he just looks like a, a veteran center out there. He holds the puck, he waits, he slows the game down. Rovolstad for Sweden, or for uh, Norway rather. His pass though misses everyone, Another and icing. this will be an icing. Now that just shows me that, that Norway is not relaxed. They're not on their game. They're not taking their time to make the passes. They're rushing them. And uh, what you would expect, being down one goal with less than 10 minutes to go. But their big players, which I've seen them do many times, are the ones that are going to have to step up. When sledge hockey made its debut at the Paralympic Winter Games in uh, Lillehammer, Norway in 94, Sweden stole the gold medal. And are they on their way to stealing a win against Norway here? Nine minutes and 15 seconds from now, we'll know the answer. 
Ingverson will head back in his own zone, but again, an icing call against Norway. Rick, we wouldn't have been surprised to see a lot of icings in the period. We would have thought they would have been Swedish icings. <laughs> yeah, exactly, but Norway's trying to get that puck up fast to try to trap some of the Swedish forwards in the zone, but they're just not hitting their mark. Morten Haglund looks a little nervous. <laughs> Had a close-up of him on the bench. Chewing that gum. The head coach of Norway, whose assistant, by the way, is uh, George Kingston, the former head coach of the San Jose Sharks in the National Hockey League. Play is deep in the Norwegian zone. They're able to get it to center ice. Bakier, but he's all by himself with three Swedish defenders who easily break up the play. Eskilhagen now for Norway. Leaves it there for Sve. Broken up again by Norway. And Ingversen will again just calmly shoot it into the Norwegian end. They're going to make the Norway defenseman go back and work to get it. Tires them out if they have to keep going in and getting it. Sending one guy in at a time. They're cast knocking him off the play, knocking Hagen off the play. And now they have the puck. Jans Kask who, along with the youngsters on this team, has done a dynamite job so far with just over eight minutes remaining. In the game of sled hockey, it's a lot better to play with a one nothing lead than to be behind. Bjornstad. For Bjake. And it's broken up again by Sweden, sent back to center where Nordstoga will shoot it in. They had to clear the zone so they don't have any four checkers really going. He had all the time in the world to move it, Ingversen, and he decided to hold on to it. Now he gave it away. Now a chance for Roins all by himself with a shot, and he misses. And Ingversen dodges a bullet along with Team Sweden. As Shell Vidar Roin just could not pull the trigger on a great chance. And here they come again, Nord Stoga with Roin going to the net. If he can get him the pass, and he can't. Norway has not lost a game at the Paralympics in round robin play. And since the 2002 Salt Lake City games, seven minutes from now, that could happen. Here comes Norway, though. They're attacking Johansson. Rovostad is on the ice. So is Peterson. Johansson can't get a shot through to the net. And Sweden will clear the zone again. It's got to be a little frustrating for Peterson. He's out there, and he's not getting the puck back. He's, he's passing it to his line mates, but he's not getting the puck back. Rolf Einer Patterson passing to himself under his sled cleverly. He'll shoot it in, but again, it'll be Sweden getting to it first. But no, it won't. Roin out hustles and out muscles Lundgren. But again, it is Jans Kask who helps his team. And out to center, Anderson in a race. But Rovolstad should get back in time. Had Aaron Anderson known he had a chance, that might have been an interesting race. Anderson, who we mentioned earlier, doubles as a summer Paralympic athlete in track and field. But here is Pedersen for Norway. Maybe the chance he's been looking for. Pedersen. To the outside, left-handed shot, and a blocker save by Nielsen. Again, Ruin centering pass, broken up by Sweden. Verns keeps it in. The shot ends up in behind the net. Pedersen chases it. Rolfiner Pedersen intercepted by Kask, and he will just calmly it lift it out to center. Pedersen quickly back in his own zone to retrieve the puck. He sees Rovolstad. He's trying to find him with a pass, and he does. Pedersen, the Norwegian captain. Now they have Bjornstad and Peterson and Rovolstad out there together. Let's see if Norway can manufacture a chance, but it's knocked away. Rovolstad couldn't reach the puck on a good defensive play by the youngster, Kaspere. And now Bjornstad's shot went wide. And another chance blocked by Kask, but he can't find it. Pedersen does. Into the middle. Bjornstad's shot is blocked. Sweden might get a chance to clear it. 
It comes to center ice, and here's a race. Anderson's got a chance. Aaron Anderson being chased, shoots it, save made, and covered up by the Norwegian goalkeeper, Johansson. Pretty exciting stuff. What a great play by Koskrik. He realized the pass straight up the middle was yep. not going to work, so he went hard off the boards. A veteran play. Like I was saying, these boards are very lively. If you know how to play pool, you know the angles, you can really take advantage of them. And I beg your pardon, I saw on the replay, it was actually Nicholas Ingverson who made that pass. If, if Anderson had a choice, maybe, you think he would have shot just a little quicker before Rovelstad caught him? Yeah, but he got that, that uh, right hand uh, shut off by Robelstad. He wasn't able to extend it. And the fans are into it, trying to inspire their team. And many of them may be Norwegian fans, many Swedish fans. It's a 1-0 Swedish lead with 4.37 to go in period number three. Well, we'll see who uh, Norway puts out here. Oh, I see Bjornstad, Pedersen. Robelstad, Hagen, and Sve, all their veterans from so many medal games. Interesting though, Sweden does not have Jans Kask on the ice. He may be getting uh, fluids intravenously after the game that he's played with so many minutes. Hagen. That, that is surprising. Four and a half minutes remaining. Sweden leading 1-0. Kaspere. And Hagen comes up with it as Norway defends, and here they come to center, Bjornstad. And all he's able to do is shoot it in. Pedersen chases it. Ingversen gets to it first. Sweden gets it near the line, but not out. And here's a chance for Bjornstad. He's got Pedersen, but the pass is easily stolen and sent down the ice, or at least to center by Sweden. Again, Pedersen is on the prowl for Norway. He centers it, intercepted again by Sweden, and again sent to center. The clock continues to tick. Just over three and a half minutes remaining. Pedersen up ahead for Sve. He's got Bjornstad, gets a shot, that went wide. Hagen chases it, he'll be the first one on it in behind the Swedish net and he's given a good ride and a jolt by Marcus Holm. But it's a chance for Pedersen, his shot was blocked. Rovostad takes it all the way in behind, still has it. Rovostad, Pedersen can't shoot, intercepted by Kask and he will just very gently shoot it down the ice. Sweep. <laughs> yeah, it needed a little uh, curling sweep, and it didn't get it, and so no icing against Sweden. Now under three minutes to play. Ingversen for Kaspere, and he'll shoot it in. Boy, what a great opportunity for this 16-year-old Kaspere. Really? At this point of the game? Bjornstad was thinking that he should have been... Uh, Trying to draw a penalty, looking up. Yeah, and he's looking at the linesman, who's not likely to call very many penalties. Uh, he's not going to go off the ice, though. These Ing guys will play the rest of the game. Ingversen for Sweden. Gets it ahead to center ice. Lundgren couldn't make much of a play. Eskilhagen protecting the puck. That may be a chance now for Bjornstad. Helga Bjornstad in a huge collision and a penalty coming against Sweden. I think that was just a collision. I don't think it was really intentional. It is a teeing penalty, and the captain of Sweden is arguing the call. He's not the one who's going to the box. I believe it is Ingversen who will go. It just looked like, to me, Rick, like he purposely collided, you know, sled first on the play. Well, I don't think he was expecting Bjornstad to go straight in because he's very... Very good at the dipsy doodle going left or right. He was right at him. He was waiting for him to make a move, and he never made a move, and he ran right into him. Again, the referee in today's game is from the USA, Derek 
Berkebeil. And he had a discussion with Jans Kask, but that is over. And the faceoff will be to the left of the Swedish net, being tended by Ulf Nielsen. Big test here for the Swedish penalty killers. And a big faceoff here for Jans Kask. 2.01 on the clock in the third period. Of course, it's a two minute penalty. Sve gets waved out, and that's because Pedersen was encroaching on the faceoff. So now Kask will go against Pedersen, and Kask wins it. Sweden around the boards. Not out of the zone, though. Rovolstad, long launching shot. That deflects high in the air. Sve for Pedersen, for Rovolstad. Shoots it, scores! Tommy Rovolstad ties the game with a minute 43 to go and a power play goal. That's got to be tough on Sweden to play so well. You take a penalty late in the, the game. To me, a questionable one, but I guess it had to be called. And now the question, Rick, is still, does this game go beyond regulation oh, exactly. time. There's still a minute 43 to go. Can Anything someone can score? Happen. Absolutely. What a great shot by Rovostad. Well, now the big thing is a win is three points. You end the game in a tie. The most you can get is two. So we expect Norway to continue with a full court press. Oh, yeah, absolutely. They got to go after those two points. Task against Sve on the faceoff, won by Norway. Eskil Hagen, again, the teams, of course, are back to full and even strength. Hagen shoots it into the, North, the Swedish zone. Ingversen back for it. Around the boards for Andersen. Too far for him, but it goes in the direction he wanted it to go. That's the Norwegian end. Norway has the same five guys out there they've had for about four or five minutes now. Play is right near the penalty box on the Norwegian side, controlled now by Hagen. Pass for Pedersen. Kask trying to cut him off. Pedersen with a nice play. Ahead for Hagen. Eskil Hagen with a long shot, and that was stopped by Nielsen, who looked awkward in making it, but he made the save, and that's the key with 56 seconds left. Big face off in their zone. I'm not sure if he should have held that puck, given the Norway a chance to win a draw and get possession of the puck. Shots on goal, 22-7, favoring Norway. 8-3 here in the third period. Only one goal on Ulf Nielsen, the 45-year-old. Kask against Sve. And again, Kask wins it. Off the glass for Sweden and out to center ice. Hagen, high in the air, bouncing puck. And the whistle goes, I think it's an offside against Norway. Well, no matter what happens in this game, Kosk has got my first start. He just played a great game. He really, really has. He'll face off again, just outside his own blue line. See the players put their hand almost on the blade of the stick when they take the face off, and again, Kask wins it. Sweden controlling, Holm. Pedersen gets to it. Hagen across the Swedish line, intercepted by the Swedes. They get it back into the zone. Lundgren didn't know where it was. And it's in the Norwegian end where Rovolstad will go back. 20 seconds to play in the third period. This might be an icing against Norway. It is with 15.1 seconds remaining in a 1-1 tie and a huge face-off in the, in the Norwegian end. Guess who's going to be taking it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I know. Who's the big Swedish shooter? That's what we want to know. Because Rick? Kask might well win the face-off. Rick and Rob, I've got a question maybe for the fans listening to us on the radio. Sure. They can text us probably which team will finally win this game. That's a question? We That's could, a question. We what could team take will a little poll. 
Take a poll. It's, take a poll, maybe, okay, on the cell phone. Let's sure. do that all together, okay? 604, 404 puck. 604. Here's a shot for Sweden. <laughs> Sorry, Louis had to get in there. Yep. And that was stopped by Johansson. And Norway will get it to center. Will they get one more chance? Pedersen. And the pass for Johansson goes wide. And Sweden has earned a point. And that is huge. At least a point. After regulation time, it is a 1-1 tie between Norway and Sweden. Well, a very good per period for Norway. They came out and started looking like the team that they have in the past. But really only in the last five minutes when they had their top five world-class players out there, did they really start doing anything? I think some of their younger players, some of the, the, the players they're bringing along, still need a little work because, as I said, when you when you had Bjornstad on one line and Pedersen on the other line, then they weren't getting the puck back. And it's very hard to play with people that aren't getting you the puck because it's a give-and-go game, especially the way Norway plays. So as soon as they put Bjornstad and Pedersen together, they look like a much sharper team out there. Guys, this pool has started already. I've got. I received a few, a uh, few message, a uh, few messages a few seconds ago. So yeah. once again, which of those two teams will finally win this game in the overtime? 604, 404 puck. Laquelle des deux équipes va remporter ce match? C'est la question qu'on vous, uh, qu'on vous demande en ce moment même. Je veux vous entendre. Je veux vous lire. 604, 404 PUCK puck. And you know what? It's one to one. I got one Norway. Well, they have to get it in before they drop the puck, so they got a minute and a half to get their choice in. Excellent, excellent. We're gonna wait for this at the moment. I'm receiving, receiving some more. I'm gonna have a look at this in a moment. Uh, I'll take a few seconds also just to tell you that we're still following all the activities in Whistler at the biathlon event there. And you know what? The Russian Federation just won his fifth medal of the day there. Uh, they just took the silver medal at the men's three kilometers pursuit final, visually impaired. So at the moment for them, it's three gold medals and two silver, which is not too bad. It's a big, it's a, I think it's a good day for uh, for Russian Federation. It there. sounds like it. Sounds like yeah. it. And there's a, another medal that will be given in a few, in a few minutes. It's at, the, at, the, at this moment, the women's three kilometers pursuit visually impaired. So the women's are in action there. So maybe, maybe another medal for the Russian Federation. They, they might be a lot happier with their Paralympians than they were with their Olympians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of displeasure on the uh, Russian yep. side after the sure. Olympic Winter Games. Lots of things have been said in the media. So. 2-1 Sweden in my, uh, in my cell phone, guys. So 25 more seconds for your choice. Your pool, which one of those two teams will get the win? 604 404 PUCK. If you have also any questions about this sledge hockey tournament, we will wait for you for your questions. Now this is a 10 minute overtime, correct? Or five? Five minutes. Five. Ten minute in a gold medal game. Well, I think it's five here. I think it's ten later on in the tournament. I can't remember yeah. if it changes for the gold medal, but it'll be five minute overtime. It's on the clock okay, now. Good. Four on four, that's the key, Rick, in terms of skaters, so the mm -hmm. goaltenders, and that will be interesting. And if it's still tied, then we ought to shoot out. Time is up. Time is up for a pool. Yeah. You know what? Sweden, three to one. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, interesting. We'll I'm wondering if those fans are from Sweden. Anyway, we're still, also very happy to, to know that you're with us today. I guess there's lots of noise also in your section. Seems like it. <laughs> we are underway. Four on four overtime hockey. Rovolstad will shoot it in. Norway's got all the big guns on the ice. Pedersen, Rovolstad, Hagen and Bjornstad. The puck is in the Swedish corner. No, no one knew where it was. Hagen being guarded by Aaron Andersen. And they scramble for it with 30 seconds gone by in the overtime period. Four on four, on four is really man on man. Sweden has to be careful here not to get, be drawn to the puck and leave some of these Norwegian players out in the open. A good block by Kosk. And he's just trying to clear it and he will get it out to center. Holm will chase it. Rovolstad looks like he'll get to it first. In fact, Pedersen with all kinds of speed gets to the puck. 
And his pass is picked off. Aaron Anderson's got a chance. And it's offside, the linesman says, right at the Norwegian blue line. It was a bang-bang play, very close. A delayed offside there. I didn't even see that one. <laughs> the one Swedish player was exiting just yep. as Anderson got it. It was close. I think, guys, lots of people have been listening to your comments about Kask. I just received a... A message from a big fan of Kask. That's a, we say hello to you, too. Well, we're big fans of Kask as well. He <laughs> has just are. been excellent and fun to watch. Marcus Holm shoots the puck in for Sweden. A minute 15 gone by in the overtime. Anderson taken against the boards by Rovostad. Anderson and Engvarsson working in the... Norwegian zone, but Rovostad finds Bjornstad, and he couldn't quite get on the end of the pass. Home and a good hit, and a great hit on Bjornstad, who maybe was trying to draw a penalty, but it looked like a good hit. That's the advantage of having Home back there. He does have speed. And look at this chance for Jens Kost. What would this be like? Kost in alone, stick handles, <laughs> and he can't get a shot on net. Oh, oh boy. And an injury, it appears, to the Norwegian goaltender. As uh, Johansson is down, he was run into by Kask, who was trying a deke. And it's tricky at the best of times, but he couldn't finish. The front of Kask's sled rammed into Johansson's stomach as he sprawled across to save this one. It wasn't on purpose, you see it right there. Kask went over. Lost his edge, slid into Johansson right there. Again, a smart play by Sweden just to set up Kask, who Rick, we know doesn't have blazing speed, but he's got just enough, and he tried to make the turn. Yeah. And make the uh, deke move, and it just did not work. A huge save by jo Johansson. He hasn't really been tested that much this game. Well, he comes up big for his team here in overtime. 3.07 remaining. Sudden victory, of course, is what we're talking about. One goal, and it's over. Morten Vierns racing in on the left side. Here comes Vierns, shoots, and what a save by Nielsen. As he reaches out with his catching hand, Sweden ices the puck. But boy, oh boy, we've had... Stellar goaltending on both ends of the ice. Great speed by Vernes there. It was I haven't really seen him play like that the whole game, and all of a sudden down the left wing. You know, it's it's a lot of these guys can skate well, but be able to handle the puck and skate at full speed. I'm very impressed. And get the shot off on his off wing. And again, a nice read. He had his glove up. That's already a, a good mm -hmm. sign for the goaltender, Nielsen. It's too hard to put the glove up if it's not there in the first place. Norway keeping it in, Holm back to get it. We're almost halfway through the five minute overtime period. Anderson, as it slide too far. And this will be another icing. Against Sweden, now exactly 2.29 remaining on the overtime clock. Well, I didn't think Bjornstad would be on the bench for too long. Robelstad's back out. Pedersen, Hagen, Bjornstad, Robelstad on the ice for Norway. And of course, Jans Kask for Sweden. Faceoff is in the Swedish zone. And Kask wins it again. Ingversen, his pass, trying to find home. He'll race down, but it'll be Rovolstad who gets to it first. They've seen that play before. Rovolstad for Bjornstad, but that is offside. This time it's against Norway. Now 2.13 remaining in the overtime. Well, Sweden just doesn't want to make any mistakes here. They, they don't seem to be really pressing for that goal. I think they'd be happy to win this in a shootout. They just want to make sure they don't get scored on it gets to a shootout. Be interesting, Rick, if we get a chance to talk to George Kingston. He's not on the Norwegian no. bench, which tells me he's probably up high watching somewhere. And so his perspective of this game may be very interesting. 
the assistant coach for Norway and, and a, a consultant with the Norwegian Ice Hockey Federation. Andersen across for Marcus Holm. Just chips it into the Norwegian end. Under two minutes remaining. Overtime period. Eskil Hagen being chased by Kask. And now Rovolstad leaves for Pedersen. Rolfiner Pedersen out to center. And maybe Bjornstad with a break. Here comes Bjornstad. In alone. Shoots. And he goes wide. He tried to center it on the second attempt, but couldn't do it. Didn't really get a shot away. Not the kind he was looking for. Well, he was trying to go wide after he saw what Pedersen did earlier. Rovostad shoots it high over top of the net. Pedersen again. A minute 10 to go in the overtime period. It's a 1-1 tie, Sweden and Norway. Kask is able to send it to center ice. And it will slide into the Norwegian end, but not far enough for icing. Eskil Hagen, and he gives it away. Ingversen for Sweden. Ingversen with Kass going to the net, makes the pass for Andersen. And he can't get a scoring chance. Pedersen, long pass to Bjornstad. And he gets away from his man. Here's a chance for Norway. Hagen with a shot. That goes high over top of the net. Bjornstad. Kask roughs him up, and now home with a hit. Rovolstad, though, for Norway. For Pedersen. And it's intercepted by Sweden. We're down to 10 seconds to go in overtime. We're going to a shootout. It would appear so. The fans counting it down. And the horn sounds, and Sweden is taking its... Tough opponent to the <laughs> shootout, and we're going to get the Olympia machine to come out and do the scrape before we head to the shootout. But wow, we had 50 minutes of excellent sledge hockey, and now we're going to get a little bit extra. Absolutely. I hope the crowd, I hope the people who are listening to us, especially watching the game, you are enjoying this, uh, this beautiful game. And by the way, the shots uh, after those four periods here, it's 23 to 8. Uh, For, uh, for Norway against uh, Sweden. Donc on espère que vous appréciez le spectacle bien entendu ici au UBC Thunderbird Arena, les tirs au but après ces quatre périodes, donc la troisième incluant uh, cette période de prolongation. C'est 23 à 8 où la Norvège mène largement à ce chapitre-là. We also want to invite you to uh, tune into Hack Radio at the Vancouver Paralympic Center. You can take your radio there to watch the wheelchair hockey curling, uh, curling uh, wheelchair tournament, yeah, uh, and listen to our expert commentary for all the wheelchair curling sessions. Vous savez, il y a encore plus sur nos ondes avec votre petit radio qui est vert, the green radio. That's how we could call it, actually, the green radio. I like that. The green machine. The green machine, the green machine. Alors, vous pouvez apporter votre radio et synthoniser Hack Radio au Centre Paralympique de Vancouver, apporter donc votre radio aux épreuves de curling en fauteuil roulant et écouter nos experts commenter cette séance de toutes les disciplines finalement de cette séance du côté, toujours du Centre Paralympique de Vancouver. We also want to quickly come back on the first game that was played here today in opening of this Paralympic tournament. Canada was taking the ice facing Italy and Canada won this game for nothing. Uh, so now we are going into uh, the, the, the next uh, the sh the shootouts actually here. Uh, so it's uh, still one to one against Norway and Sweden. And more to come actually also here on uh, Puck Radio. And we will be there also for the whole tournament here at Thunderbird UBC Arena at 5 p.m. And a little bit later today, we will be here also. And we will maybe welcome you for this game between USA and Korea. And we also uh, we will also follow the fourth game of the day tonight, a little bit later today at 8:30 between Japan and and Czech Republic. Je vous rappelle également qu'il y avait d'autres matchs présentés aujourd'hui ici au UBC Thunderbird Arena, 
le Canada qui prenait place sur la glace d'entrée de jeu du tournoi, qui l'a emporté par la marque de 4 à 0 contre l'équipe de l'Italie. Présentement, à l'aube de cette dernière période de prolongation, bien l'équipe de la Norvège fait égalité 1 à 1 avec l'équipe de la Suède. Et un peu plus tard également, toujours ici au UBC Thunderbird Arena à 5 h, donc 17 h. Affrontement entre l'équipe américaine et l'équipe de la Corée. Et bien entendu, un, peu, un petit peu plus tard également, l'équipe du Japon qui va affronter l'équipe de la République tchèque. Rick, I was quickly talking about the USA team taking the ice a little bit later today against Korea. It's going to be interesting to follow this team who are, I would say, the favorites. They are ranked first finally in this tournament. Well, they have the youngest team yep. in the tournament. They have possibly the fastest team by talking to other teams, yep. saying how fast they are. Uh, and just because they're young doesn't mean they're not experienced. They won the world championships in 09. Uh, I'm told that uh, Cash, uh, the goaltender, is probably the best goaltender in the tournament. So when you have a fast team, a pretty high scoring team, and the best goaltender in the tournament, you're going to be hard to beat. But, you know, as I said, you look at the, the Norway play against Sweden, You know, they just, they're so patient, they just wait you out. Now they have an opportunity to win this game. That's how they play. That's how they're going to play against the USA. That's how they're going to play against Canada, should they get a chance to meet them. Rick Middleton, he now in French. I'll just quickly translate. Don't worry, I won't ask you anything in French, Rick. <laughs> Unless you want to try. Uh, no, I think I'll pass. <laughs> okay, that. that's all right. <laughs> Rapidement, donc, Rick qui revenait brièvement sur ce match de l'équipe américaine un peu plus tard aujourd'hui contre l'équipe de la Corée. Les Américains qui sont classés au premier rang ici à l'aube de ce tournoi. C'est une équipe très complète, cache notamment le gardien de but qui est reconnu comme l'un des meilleurs, selon du moins la majorité des analystes avec, euh, avec qui Rick a discuté au cours des euh, dernières heures. Bref, c'est une équipe très bien balancée, une équipe très jeune également. Et ça ne veut pas dire parce que c'est une équipe jeune qu'ils ne sont pas une équipe qui est expérimentée. Ils ont quand même remporté le dernier championnat du monde. Et bref, ils vont, ils vont prendre la glace un peu plus tard ici, euh, du côté de, du UBC Thunderbird Arena. Je vous rappelle également que Reed avait été l'entraîneur de l'équipe américaine de hockey luge lors des Jeux de Salt Lake City en 2002. Ils avaient remporté la médaille d'or. The Olympia ice scraping machine or ice cleaning machine has come out and done its job and scraped the ice. The puck is waiting at center. It looks like the first shooter will be a Norwegian and the first uh, goaltender to do his job will be on the Swedish side, Ulf Nielsen, who let's face it has been tremendous in this game. He has stopped 22 of 23 shots. In fact, it looks like it might just be Sweden shooting first <laughs> as uh, Johansson makes his way to his net. And remember, Rick, he was given a hard ride near the end of the game, mm -hmm. and look who's shooting first, 16-year-old on the, on the Swedish side, Per Kaspari. Here he comes, Kaspari for Sweden. In the game-winning shot competition, skating in, shooting, scoring! And Sweden takes the lead on Kaspari's goal. <laughs> Who does he think he is, Ovechkin? I missed that. He must have he shot a stick. He threw his glove in, his air, in the air and tried to bat it out of the air with his stick, and he missed it. Now, what's interesting here is Kaspari comes from the same uh, hometown as the goaltender. In fact, uh, that's Tomalila. That's Lundgren who does that, but... He is a 16-year-old, and he gives his team the lead. And now Pedersen will try to respond for Norway. This selection doesn't surprise me. The roll finder, Pedersen, picks it up with lots of speed. Pedersen shoots, and he scores <laughs> in a response. And he just fired it. <laughs> He's got a bullet, too. There was no mistake in that. He wasn't aiming. He was just firing. Rolf Einer Pedersen, and he launched it at the corner of the net. Didn't have a lot of room to spare, but he knew where he wanted to shoot, and he, boy, oh, boy, it ricocheted from yep. side to side inside the cage. Those hard high shots are so so difficult for sledge hockey goalies to get to. Unless you got cat light reflexes, 
Here comes number three, Nicholas Ingversen, the 31-year-old, in on Johansson. Ingversen, left shot, shoots and scores! And Sweden reclaims the lead. Well, he got that up fast. I didn't think he could. I thought he'd gone too far. And so now the pressure on Helga Bjornstad. Long-time veteran of the Norwegian ice sledge hockey program. I wrote my selections down who I thought was shooting. I'm two for two with Norway. I'm zero for two for Sweden. <laughs> well, and they're two for two in scoring. So. I know. It's a good thing you're in the booth this time, <laughs> Mr. Middleton. Exactly. Bjornstad against Nielsen. Here comes the 38-year-old Helga Bjornstad. Bjornstad should shoot with the right. Stick handles and the deke and he scores. He fooled Nielsen and we're tied. Yeah, when those goalies go for that first fake, it's hard for them to get back in their net once you go down. He planned that one all the way. Well crafted by Bjornstad. And now Sweden will try to reclaim the lead yet again here in the shootout. The game winning shots competition. It's almost like being a soccer goalie. You really have to guess at it sometimes. Mark, Marcus Holm who scored the only goal for Sweden in regulation. Here he comes home and he hit the crossbar. He fired one, it hit the crossbar and went high into the crowd. It's a souvenir for a lucky fan, but it's not a goal. And so now a chance to win it for the captain of Team Norway, Tommy Rovostad. Think he'll be shooting? <laughs> he has got a rocket launch, we know it. Here comes Rovolstad, the 37-year-old for Norway. He has the game on his stick. Rovolstad fakes, shoots, and scores. It's over. Norway wins it in a shootout. Here they wow. come to celebrate. 2-1 the final. Well, he faked me out. That was a good hockey game. A lot of fun. Norway had to fight a lot harder than they thought they were going to have to. And Tommy Robelstad with a fake and then the deke on Nielsen. Well, it was that unfortunate penalty for Sweden in the last two minutes of the game that afforded Norway a chance to put their five world-class players on the ice and score that tying goal to get them to overtime and ultimately to the shootout. But it was a very good game by Sweden and a great comeback by Norway. And it was a lot of fun for us, that's for it sure. It really was. I enjoyed that game. Well, you paid for your whole seat, folks, but you probably only needed to use the edge because this was a dynamite ice sledge hockey game between Sweden and Norway, and it ends in a 2-1 win for Norway. Louis Simon Lapointe, take it away, the post-game show. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. And I've, I, actually, you know, the Canadian team will now face uh, Sweden tomorrow. It will be interesting to see how those two teams will uh, will be playing. So uh, those will be, uh, so this will be one of the next game that we will be presenting here on Puck Radio. Quickly, a little bit later today, a bit later today, there will be a... I just wanted to make one yep. point. We don't want to forget how good of an effort this was by Sweden. And Rick and I were mentioning Jans Kask, number 13 for Sweden. Boy, oh boy, did he put on a show in this hockey game. And we don't want to forget to just give him a little mention, I think. Absolutely. He would be your player of the game. Absolutely. Huh? Yep. And I think Rick yep. would agree. Absolutely. And actually, I also received a few good uh, text messages about uh, Mr. Kask. He's one a of the most. Lot of fans. Probably a lot, lot. He made a lot of a lot of fans today here at UBC Thunderbird Arena. So yeah, today there was one other game a little bit earlier uh, at 10 a.m. this morning. Canada won for nothing against uh, against uh, uh, Italy. At the moment, a few moments ago, the Norwegian team just won in shootout 2-1 two -two against uh, Sweden. A little bit later, also at 5 p.m. today. USA will take the ice against Korea and at 8.30 p.m. Japan will face Czech Republic. 
Jour numéro 2 aujourd'hui, les Jeux paralympiques d'hiver de Vancouver de 2010. L'équipe canadienne, plus tôt aujourd'hui, l'a emporté 4 à 0 contre l'équipe Italie. Il y a quelques instants à peine, la Norvège l'a emporté 2 à 1 en tir de barrage contre la Suède. À 17 h aujourd'hui, les États-Unis qui entrent en scène contre l'équipe de la Corée. Et un peu plus tard, à 20h30 aujourd'hui, l'équipe du Japon qui affrontera l'équipe de la de République tchèque. Now Sweden will play his next game against Canada. And for Norway, they will play their next game tomorrow against Italy. On behalf of myself, Louis Smolapointe, Rob Snook and Rick Anderson, thanks for being with us today. Have a great night, a great day here in Vancouver. See you later here at Thunderbird UBC Arena and on Puck Radio. My name is mon nom est Louis Smolapointe. En mon nom personnel, Rick Middleton. Did I say something bad? <laughs> We're having fun, Louis. Oh, yeah, I know We're that. We're having fun. Rick Middleton. <laughs> <laughs>